these presentations uh, will show something we do besides our projects. They're usually small, small scientific project. This one was uh, a pilot, uh, is still running. So it's a pilot study in collaboration with, with the Nor Norway, with the laboratory of Professor Truls Rastat. Um, basically, if we look at the androgens and more specifically on testosterone, then it's clear that some people have uh, lower limits, lower levels, uh, levels in blood. And uh, this condition is called hypogonadism. Uh, the cutoff level may differ from country to country, but it's somewhere under the 10 or seven nanomoles per liter. And this condition of course brings some issue and risk in, in such a uh, person. Yesterday, we could hear a very nice talk of Prophet of Bianchi on uh, testosterone and Alzheimer's disease, but clearly there is more wider range of, of problems that a person who has low testosterone can suffer from, uh, from these per, like performance levels, fitness levels to you know, psychological issues like depressed and constant fatigue. Uh, usually the phenotype is, is uh, obese or un, uh, overweighted. And so that was our point, which came from the clinical life that if we can do something with this condition with uh, exercise, more specifically with resistance exercise. So at the moment, because yeah, the corona and the COVID things uh, affected also this study, and we still need a few more in a group of untreated patients, but what have now, it's, uh, we measured eight normal men healthy from the point of testosterone. Then patients who have low testosterone, but they are not treated. And patients who have these conditions and they are treated. In Slovakia, we have uh, one treatment only, which is uh, testosterone undeconate uh, injection every three months. So this was the sample I will present now. Uh, we did pre uh, phenotyping and muscle biopsies, blood tests. Then there was 12 weeks of uh, resistance training. And then we repeated the same after the, after the intervention. What we found just uh, briefly uh, as expected regarding of the level of testosterone, each patient could improve the, the trained parameters like ma maximum strength. You, you can see in non-treated patients, treated patients or healthy men, the increases were really, really big and uh, I think relevant to the uh, fitness. If we look on a body composition measured either by just uh, waist circumference or DEXA scans, then uh, very positive outcomes in all group, basically uh, total fat mass decreased, uh, waist circumference uh, decreased in in the patients, so treated or untreated, and total lean mass, so how much muscle mass they could build, increased in a non-treated and healthy person, not significantly on treated patients. So you can see it, uh, for instance, the visceral fat, which we know is uh, metabolically very active in a negative way, mostly, then um, non-treated and healthy men could decrease the amount of visceral abdominal fat. So these are positive uh, results coming from resistance training twice a week uh, and no other intervention like diet or aerobic training. So really just basically two and a half uh, hours a week of pure, I could call it uh, bodybuilding resistance training. From which is, I think, quite interesting, but that's why we want to increase the number of these non-treated patients that we were able to observe an increase in testosterone, uh, morning uh, fasting testosterone in a group of untreated persons or patients from 7.9 to 9.6 nanomoles per liter, which means that we could almost reach the normal levels of, which is, describe of, of Eugonada level, which is in Slovakia, 10 nanomoles in per liters. But we just want to be safe. So that's why we are planning when this uh, Corona crazy times will be, you know, you know, allow us to continue and have a bit more of these patients and, and increase the number to be sure that this is really not coming from some, uh, some other issues. Uh, 
they could find also some correlation like uh, testosterone, total testosterone and waist circumference. Logically, the more testosterone uh, you have, uh, then the leaner you are in the abdominal, which is cor uh, correlated with this phenotype, as I, I already said. And from maybe like metabolic uh, diseases point of view that there was a clean uh, correlation between total testosterone and insulin. Again, uh, the more or the less testosterone you have, the higher insulin in your circulation you have. So that's, that's a logical finding too. And at the end, uh, just to show some very preliminary results from uh, muscle biopsies we took, uh, because uh, Feliciano and the others, they talk very nicely about mitochondria. So this is about 10 days old results uh, from Western blots when we focused on, uh, on those uh, oxidative phosphorylation uh, enzymes in, in mitochondria. Uh, so this whole complex from one to five. And what we could see uh, in two complexes that these are the healthy men. And after the resistance training, I, I repeat just two and a half hour per week of, of resistance training, nothing else. Uh, they could increase uh, this complex four. And we could see these increases also in our previous studies with uh, healthy elderly people. But uh, that was not the case in treated patients. Uh, these are combined, uh, both treated and untreated in this case. But what was very interesting, uh, let's say in complex one, no changes is in healthy people, but uh, sort of decrease, which is very interesting. And that's why we want to get more people and uh, have more uh, better like power of, of our uh, data. So at the end, if I just, uh, okay, there is one more muscle biopsy. We do also uh, classical immunohistochemistry. At the moment, the analyses are not finished. They are, you know, time consuming. So it seems, both three groups could increase the uh, muscle, muscle fiber cross-sectional area. If we looked, let's say on a myonuclear per fiber, this analysis has been uh, finished some uh, days ago, then uh, as expected, uh, you could increase by training the number of, of uh, myonuclear per fiber, but not in a group of non-treated patients. So it means even though they are able to increase strength, they are able to increase muscle fiber cross-sectional area, the mechanisms might be different if there is a, a state of low testosterone. And if you have a treated patient who are artificially higher testosterone by, by the treatment, then they could increase the myonuclear uh, number per fiber. So to conclude, uh, really strength training just twice a week have a positive changes for muscle strength body composition and I just again strength that it was without any nutritional intervention. So it could be even more beneficial in that case. And it's clear that the most benefits uh, are seen in hormonally untreated hypogonadal men. And this gives sort of uh, um, idea that this could be a, as a supplemental therapy for, for this condition of hypogonadal men and both in primary and secondary hypogonadism. And which was very interesting. And if we can confirm with higher number of subjects that uh, this kind of intervention can actually increase the low levels of uh, circulating testosterone. So that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Milan, uh, also for the very uh, precise and short presentation. Is there any question to Milan? Hello? I have one question. Milan, uh, I tried to, to, to use testosterone about uh, 30 years ago in poliomyelitis patients, but I was always, uh, um, uh, I have no chance to overcome the urologist. They said, no, if you do testosterone treatment on poliomyelitis patient, there will be some cancer, you know? And uh, do you know, and can you give us some suggestion? What is your uh, opinion with the uh, urologists in Bratislava? 
uh, I think they have still the same opinion as you could face uh, 30 years ago. They are really reluctant to use testosterone for any, any other diseases which are not related to low testosterone, even mm -hmm. though, as we could hear yesterday uh, in the talk of Professor Bianchi, that there is actually a potential for, for the treatment with uh, testosterone therapy. But of course, there are some risks. For, so this is, uh, I think, the climate is not ready for, for a massive use of testosterone, but maybe now we have a new drugs or new class of drugs, which is uh, selective androgen receptors modulators, which may have a side, somewhat lower negative effects on uh, like side effects. So that could be used instead of testosterone. With, um, so, uh, so that's, but I am not a, a clinician, so I cannot talk on their behalf. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there any urgent question? To Larson, Larson is. Uh, would you open your microphone, please, or not? No. Sorry, I, it was my my hand, not your. <laughs> I, I have a, a short question, but uh, uh, Edmund raised problems versus testosterone, and I will not in encourage you to use it. But uh, results seem to be promising of the strength training. Okay, all anabolic drugs are successful in strength training, you know. But uh, therefore, I was a little bit uh, in doubt what is uh, the treatment with testosterone, you know. Yeah, maybe the idea of this study was uh, actually to use exercise as yeah. a replacement for yeah. maybe as. Though yeah. we could decrease the need of, of testosterone actually in the treatment. So that's, that was the idea of this pilot study, I would call it. Brilliant result. Thank you very much. Thank you.